Bonjour à toutes et bonjour à tous, je suis ici avec Mitsuo qui travaille chez Sony Computer Entertainment et qui a notamment travaillé chez Electronic Arts avant. So, uh, hi Mitsuo, Morning. can you uh, introduce yourself and uh, tell us what you are doing in the video game industry? Yeah, uh, my name is uh, Mitsuo Hirakawa and uh, I work as a producer at uh, Sony Interactive Entertainment in Europe. Uh, right now my job uh, entails um, working with external partners to bring uh, Sony exclusive titles to PlayStation platforms. Okay, so you, uh, you began your career in the video game industry uh, within Electronic Arts Company. So can you uh, tell us how did you end up at Electronic Arts? Well, um, because of my Japanese uh, heritage, uh, my first job uh, within the industry was uh, managing the localization process uh, of Electronic Arts games uh, to publish uh, in Asia. So that's how I uh, started my industry. From then on, uh, you know, I, I worked on games like F1 series, Harry Potter, uh, amongst other things, and uh, yeah, really fun times. Yeah, so you said it, one of the first uh, games you uh, worked on was Harry Potter and the Philo Philosopher's Stone. Uh, it's a game uh, we like very much, well, the PC version at least, because there was a lot of version. I don't know if you remember, but uh, uh, GBA version, GB GBC, PS1, PC. Uh, what can you tell us about this period of your life? How was it to manage all these projects? Yeah, so from production perspective, it was crazy because we had six, seven platforms, 27, 28 languages. We have multiple uh, developers. We even had a French developer called Magic Pocket, uh, who did one of the conversions for us. So it was really crazy time. But you know, because it was a very popular franchise, uh, we we had to meet the, the the release date of the film. It was really really crazy times. And, uh, what was your job exactly on these titles? Yeah, so I worked uh, in localization first, and then I moved into development management. So you know, running production uh, for the development teams. Okay, so there was a Japanese translation for these games. Yeah, it was mostly um, uh, Japanese, but I, I managed a lot of the Asian languages as well because, um, obviously, as you know, um, you know, you have to create language versions and they have to be submitted to different regions uh, for certification and approval. So, uh, yeah, crazy times. And, uh, from your localization point of view, uh, how was it to manage all these different versions? Because I think they have different texts, uh, different stories, and uh, we did all these versions, and uh, it's crazy uh, how they are different sometimes. Yeah, I think the most difficult part was finding the right cast uh, for the voice talent for each character, because obviously um, everybody in the world knew what the cast looks like from the film, but we had to find the Japanese Harry Potter, you know, the Korean Ron Weasley. Uh, so yeah, that was really, really interesting process to be part of. And how did you manage to do it, to find the Korean uh, Ron and Weasley? Well, it was a lot of hard work, a lot of uh, working together with Warner Brothers, who was uh, managing the approval process with us. So a lot of communication, uh, back and forth, back and forth. But uh, it was a long, long game, but uh, we, we finally got to do it on time. In the end, uh, do you know if uh, this localization was uh, liked by the people, uh, by, by the Asian people? No, it was. Uh, I, I think um, localization at uh, Electronic Arts is really, really uh, high quality. Um, you know, uh, it's not a simple case of just translating text and audio. It's, it's. Um, we, we translate the contextual nuances. Uh, it's. It was. It was a very, very in-depth process, and uh, I think the quality of localization on different publishers now is really, really high as well. So, yeah, it's something that uh, it, it kind of. You know, I'm very proud of being part of uh, in my earlier career. 
So the Harry Potter series evolved a lot over time. So what was your, your perception from an internal, an internal point of view? You know, there is a, a great difference between the order of the Phoenix and the first game. So how was it internally and how did you live this transition? So I think the difficulty was trying to be creative within the license because our game was based on the film. It wasn't based on the book. So we had access to a studio the film studios, uh, we visited the sets, we managed to uh, get the, the, the actors and actresses from the film come and do voices for us. Uh, so I think it was trying to be creative uh, over the years, still within the re restriction we had within the IP. Uh, but uh, it's, it's understanding what Warner Brothers would allow us to do within the, it, the limitation that was uh, the, the big challenge. Okay, and from your personal point of view, which Harry Potter games did you like the most to work on? Oh, it's a tough one. <laughs> it's probably going to be the first one because it has such an impact. I mean, it sold so, so many millions of copies around the world and because it was the first game in a long series of uh, games that Electronic Arts did, uh, that's probably going to be one that's most memorable to me because it was really tough because we had so many developers working uh, you know we had Argonauts team in London like I say Magic Pocket uh, we had teams in three four different countries working on the same no game wonder, even in the United States oh yeah so I, I think um, in a way that's you know most difficult project but most rewarding and most satisfying we know that the first one was very successful but do you know if uh, the other one you worked on were also successful well I, I think um, you, know, you know I think there, there was a commercial appeal to having uh, you know a film game per se um, I think uh, you know it, it, right now games related to films is quite difficult so you have to get that right uh, so in most recent times uh, in Sony we published uh, you know the announced um, the, the spider-man game as well so um, games based on films can still be successful but it has to be done right do you think that uh, nowadays there is a, a lot more budget because you are talking about the current in development Spider-Man from Sony it, it's crazy how it looks and uh, when you look back 10 years, 15 years ago, I think the movie's adaptation didn't have this kind of budget. Yeah, I think um, the, the budget since moving from PS3, PS4 uh, is, is crazy. But uh, obviously, uh, that's the AAA um, quality, you know, graphically, the you know, facial expression, the technology behind it is, 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 is amazing. And it does cost a lot of money to get that right. Uh, you know, in Paris Games Week, we just announced, uh, you know, the trailers for, for new games that Sony is going to be announcing, have announced. And uh, yeah, some of the technology, e even I, I'm really surprised how, how good it is. But I, I'm guessing it does cost quite a lot of... But you know everything that's behind the door, don't you? <laughs> no, not quite, not quite. But, um, you know, I personally prefer creativity, innovation, uh, new ways to experience, rather than always spending 100 million, 200 million on, on the games. Uh, so, you know, uh, working in smaller teams is feels much nicer because you can still be uh, part of something creative rather than being, being in a team of... 400, 500 people when you don't really, you only have a very small part to play. This is why you're working on Wild. Maybe, ah. maybe we will talk about it later. But. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Wild. <laughs> yeah, so uh, then you moved to Criterion. Uh, can you tell us about uh, this period of your life? Yeah, Criterion to me uh, was uh, really interesting because the studio is all about quality, 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 quality. Um, it was probably the first game that I worked on that uh, scored 90 plus on Metacritic. Uh, Black was really good, really, really tough, but the, um, I really learned that from a design perspective, you have to iterate, repeat, iterate, balance, 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 and uh, we spent all Christmas. We had one day off during Christmas Day uh, and we worked all the way to New Year's uh, to finish the game and uh, it was a really tough time for everyone in the team but the final product was very very high quality and um, at that time we focused on destruction. Everything was destructible uh, in PS2 days that was quite new and um, you know we, we called the experience uh, like gun porn you know, we, we guns was everything uh, on that game, and uh, 
very, very interesting time I had in my career, and it's something that I'm still very proud of. Didn't uh, you want to want you to do a, a sequel at the time to Black? Yeah, I, I think there was discussion within management whether we want to do another sequel. Um, but obviously, you know, um, I think one thing led to another, and I think um, you know, burnout was uh, something that you know we wanted to make as a sequel uh, with Burnout Paradise and stuff. So I think. Um, You know, black. Maybe if somebody wants to make black too, I'm more than welcome to. You know, uh, you know, go and help, <laughs> go and help out. Yeah, it's a good game. Was it a commercial success? I think so. Yeah, I think um, you know the Criterion's uh, heritage is it's it's in racing games. Uh, you know, from all the Burnout series, so I think they you know stuck to you know what what you know what they're best at doing. And so, what is your experience uh, on Burnout series? So I worked as a development manager, and uh, you know we we had um, you know two or uh, two or three other development managers. We split our responsibilities. Uh, I looked after like the art team, uh, animation, you know, um, car modeling, outsourcing, uh, and different guys managed you know um, the design team, the programming team. So it was um, it's such a big team that uh, you can't just manage the whole team on your own. So we did split. Our um, responsibilities. And was it fun to manage uh, burnout game development? Yeah, I, I think um, it really helps when the game you're making is something you really like to play in your private time. Uh, Harry Potter is great, you know, uh, but obviously, you know, Burnout Black is something that I really enjoy playing uh, with my friends. So yeah, it was a really fun time, really tough, really tough project with long hours, but. Uh, Really love the game, and uh, once you see the game sold in shops and people talk about it, it all the problems you had in the past is is gone. Yeah, it's a series we like very much here. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, do you know uh, where is the Burnout series now? Oh, I don't know. I don't know to be honest. Um, I'd imagine. Uh, you know the the whole of Criterion is now you know focused is they're part of a different you know EA label aren't they so they're helping out on Star Wars so you know I'd imagine they would be focusing more on that franchise uh, you know I, I'd love to see another burnout on next gen uh, you know uh, but uh, wait and see I think a lot of people would like this too <laughs> uh, me too me too absolutely I'm, I'm, a, I'm a great fan and I think we're missing You know a lot of um, you know arcade racing games. Uh, you know I know we've seen games like Horizon and you know, uh, but uh, yeah, it, it'll be good to see a good arcade racer. Yeah, but uh, there is only Horizon. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I think uh, I better speak to uh, Shuhei Yoshida to ask him to make a, a, a you know a arcade racing game for Sony as well. Uh, I think you should. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will. I'll just call him. I'll just call him. Hey Shuhei. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so then you moved uh, to uh, do another racing game, Blur, and then you moved to uh, to Sony to to work uh, uh, to end up on Wild nowadays. Can you uh, uh, tell us about this transition? Yeah, so after uh, Criterion, um, I moved to a company in Liverpool called Bizarre Creation. So we made a game called uh, Blur, uh, and um, it, it was uh, Bizarre Creation was then part of Activision. So uh, they, you know, we had a really big team, uh, and uh, Blur was a, a really fun arcade racing game with licensed cars, with power-ups. It was like adults Mario Kart feel. Uh, yeah, it was again. It was that team's uh, drive for quality is amazing. It's probably one of the best arcade racing games. You know that that feels right. It's entertaining uh, playing with your friends on that. So it's a really good game. So if you had to choose Burnout or Blur, ah, <laughs> that's a tough one. They're, they're equally good because they, you know, they're they're both reviewed really well, and uh, yeah, it, it's a shame that you know um, it, Bizarre Creation doesn't exist anymore. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it was a yeah, they're both very good games. I think they wanted to do a sequel too, no? Yes, um, actually, I, I was working on a sequel, uh, and and the studio shut down. Uh, so it, it's a shame that, uh, but I hope you know some some other developer will take the old assets uh, and actually you know create Blur 2 because we were p pretty close to Alpha when the studio was shut down. So um, yeah, it's something that um, it's somebody could easily rejuvenate. I think. 
So when you move to Sony, and now you are working on Wild. So Wild is a game we want to play it very much, yeah, because uh, uh, first it is developed in France, in Montpellier, and uh, then it's by uh, Michel Ancel team, uh, and we love Michel Ancel project, so its previous project, Rayman, Beyond Good and Evil. So, uh, but we didn't hear about Wild since a while. So, uh, can you give me some news about it? Yeah. So. All I can say right now is that while this is still going strong, um, we like to take our time uh, on the wild because um, game quality is our number one priority and we don't want to rush development, we don't want to rush Michelle's team just to make something um, uh, average for Sony as Sony exclusive. So um, it is definitely going strong. Uh, and that the team is, uh, you know, going, doing really well in Montpellier. And uh, yeah, well, I, I, would, I would love to update you and uh, you know the rest of the world uh, soon about uh, news about Wild. You can begin by you and us. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, how is your collaboration between Whiteship Studio and Sony to do this game? Yeah, so Michel um, contacted uh, some people we know in Sony saying he wants to start a new studio in Montpellier. So we were really interested in the, the game Wild and uh, obviously we started funding uh, you know, the project, uh, help him set up the studio and uh, since then you know, we've been having a very close relationship. I speak to them every day, I go to Montpellier once a month. I'm, trying to improve my French, it's <laughs> terrible. Uh, but uh, I really enjoy working with them. They're really creative, really creative. The, the, when you visit a development team, you feel the energy in the team. And that team has a lot of energy and it's very nice feeling. And uh, that's something I learned over the many, many years uh, of you know a team with good creativity, innovation, and uh, Wild Sheep Studio is definitely a team that um, you know has a lot of energy, a lot of creativity, and Sony wants something great for PlayStation 4, so we're not going to again rush him to make something that he doesn't want to compromise on. So we're gonna uh, we're patiently waiting. So it's unlimited time. Well, <laughs> let me call Shuhei. As a, as a, as a, <laughs> we'll see how much time he's got left. Yeah, not really unlimited, but uh, you want to let uh, him the time to yes, do it. absolutely. No, because, you know, um, even experienced developers make mistakes. We have to make mistakes to find the right choice for the design for the game. Uh, we want to provide him uh, with all the support necessary. Uh, so that's why, you know, things sometimes do take a lot longer than uh, we expect. But, uh, yeah, it, it's we feel that um, Wild deserves the extra time and the quality uh, before it comes to public. I agree. <laughs> yeah, I think because I think it will be a great game. So, a great game needs time, like like you just said. Uh, but uh, I'm curious, how uh, did Michel convince you uh, with its concept? Did he already have a demo to present you, or uh, just a concept? So at, at the time, it was pure concept you know it was literally uh, you know talking about the animals controlling animals uh, in an open world setting so uh, you know it was you know it was is a very very good concept it was you know um, it was very green lit uh, within the uh, Sony management very quickly uh, and it's Michel Ansel you know he, he has a great history great great track record of creating high quality games so uh, I, I'm I'm sure he, he will be delivering a very good game so will uh, 2018 will be the good time to sh show it again <laughs> maybe that's that could be the vintage year who knows who knows maybe you <laughs> not me is that sure <laughs> so <laughs> I asked you here again <laughs> <laughs> you could give me its number, <laughs> maybe. So one last question, it's a question that we ask to uh, every uh, developer. Uh, what do you think about the video game uh, industry in your country? Uh, it's uh, uni United Kingdom, I think. Yeah. And uh, what do you think about the video game industry in France, if you have one? So I think um, the, the part of the reason I'm here in uh, Paris Games Week and Game Connection is to source, to meet uh, new developers with a new concept so you know, we can collaborate with Sony. I find um, the French games industry, the, especially the indie scene, is, feels it's much stronger. It's well supported by uh, the French government, different trade bodies and different subsidies. So I, I'm actually quite envious of the French uh, games industry because it seems there's, it's, it's a lot more active. Uh, there's a lot of incubation programs. 
Um, so we have markets like the Nor Nordic regions have a g very, very good, strong um, uh, incubation programs. But I think France also has one of the strongest in Europe. So yeah, I I'm quite envious. I'm in your uh, mother tongue country, Japan. Yeah, so Japan's, you know, uh, obviously I work for Sony, so I, I, you know, I make console games. So uh, it's, uh, it's sad to see, you know, so many developers move towards mobile games now. But mobile market in Japan is really, really big. So that's something, you know, uh, they can't ignore. So I, I agree, you know, what they're doing. But uh, I would personally like to see Japan get back to creating high quality AAA console games. Uh, and that's what I'd like to see from Japanese developers. Okay, thanks a lot, Mitsuru, for this interview. We wish you a good time in Paris. Enjoy on uh, a good time with Wild. We're eager to see uh, your work, what you're doing with the team. Yeah, thank you very much. See you. Thank you.